Good afternoon, everybody. This is David with TechFront.net. Hope everybody's doing well. And we are on the eve of one of the biggest announcements of the year. And in my opinion, one of the biggest announcements we've had from Microsoft here in the past few years. Let's take a minute and talk about it. That big announcement is tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern. Make sure you check it out. Big thing we, well, we've we heard so far, Surface Pro 8, we've had several leaks, we've seen a few images, we've seen specs. The big thing is, looks like we're finally going to see Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4, don't know which they're going to choose, in a Microsoft Surface product. Hallelujah. I am thrilled to see that. I think that opens up a lot of doors for the Surface product especially if it makes their way or makes its way to the other side of the surface product line in the higher end of whatever the replacement for the surface book is going to be looks like there's going to be a replacement with a new form factor can't wait to see hope we get thunderbolt in that as well thunderbolt is going to open up a new workflow really a new workflow for a lot of people um, you know, Thunderbolt docks, plug everything into the dock, plug the Thunderbolt cable in, you get your device charging, you get all your devices connected. Our Mac users and MacBook users are more accustomed to that. Mac and Apple have been using Thunderbolt for a long time. That's part of the reason the creators head over to Thunderbolt for that one port high speed connection that provides everything you need and you connect your dock. So, Apple may be getting some competition if Surface executes this correctly. Now, if we see support for things like eGPUs, that opens up a completely amazing workflow for Surface products because as we know, the Surface Pro products, the best graphics they've had so far have been Iris XE, which is no knockoff compared to UHD graphics. And we know that the Surface Book, the best it has seen is the 1650 and the 1660, so we know it's quite a bit of ways behind. It's going to be interesting to see if this new Surface device with the new form factor is, is boosted up to the RTX 3000 series, or even the 2000 series would be an improvement but you know imagine gamers creators you want that portable device but you're a little bit afraid to buy that surface pro or that surface pro 7 well now if the surface pro 8 has thunderbolt and supports eGPUs which it should in theory imagine being able to come home plug your surface into one device you got power if you get the right enclosure, you've got a little hub, you've got your dedicated graphics right there. You're able to use your dedicated graphics for your creative work, do some gaming, do some rendering, unplug it, pick it up, take it to the living room, do your basic email, your tablet, your media consumption. It would be the true all-in-one device. This is my opinion, but in my opinion, this could be what could potentially push Surface into better competition with the iPad Pro. And certainly better competition with the MacBook Air. The, the, the M1 to me kind of becomes irrelevant at that point. Because the M1 is only good for what Apple software can provide. Again, imagine being able to take something like Photoshop, Premiere. Sure, it'll run with XC graphics, but you know, there's always that dedicated graphics boost there. Plug it into an eGPU, get your work done, unplug it, you've got that tablet form factor. You take it anywhere you need to. To me, that's the ultimate workflow. Surface Surface Pro 8, Thunderbolt, eGPU with a Thunderbolt dock. To me, that, that's an amazing workflow. And we don't even know what exactly is going to replace the Surface Book yet. 
we don't even know it's going to be called the Surface Book 4. I've heard, you know, Surface Creator, you know, I've heard various names leaked. We don't know what it's going to be. We'll find out tomorrow. We've also heard that the Surface Pro X is getting a 16 gig of RAM version with an improvement to the Microsoft SOC. We, you know, they use a customized Snapdragon version in that. I've also heard there's going to be a Wi-Fi only version, which to me, I don't really see a point. And I know there's some folks out there that really say, look, the point is better battery life and I don't want LTE. Well, great. To that, I say go buy yourself a more inexpensive Windows PC and get better app compatibility. Because as we know, ARM does not offer full app compatibility yet. So, here's what you do. Leave the LTE in there. Have that always connected workstation just like we've always had with the Surface Pro X. And go get that all-in-one device. Sure. Will it run all your software? Doubtful. That's supposed to get better with Windows 11. We'll have to wait and see. Rumor is they're going to announce it tomorrow with Windows 11, which would make sense because the Windows 11 public release is a little over a week away. That makes sense. I could see that happening. I could see our first Windows 11 device being announced tomorrow. Now, when will these be available for purchase? That's a toss-up with the supply chain. We could see these available for purchase for purchase right away, but I think realistically November, December, and for me, if we get what the leaks are going to be, that's kind of going to be a downer. I'm looking forward to that new device. Really want to get my hands on it. Really want to give it a good, a good shakedown, a good review. So, that's kind of what we got on tap. We've heard there's also going to be a smaller announcement with the Surface Duo 2. Hopefully Microsoft adds 5G to this one and ups the CPU just a little bit. Hopefully they've worked out some more of the bugs from the Surface Duo 1 because we certainly know how buggy the Surface Duo 1 was and has been even though it has improved. We've also heard there's going to be a Surface Go 3. Slight spec bump there with the i3 still having the LTE option. Don't expect Thunderbolt on that one, but it would be cool. That's more of a low-end portable tablet-ish, educational, quick email, social media type device if you get the i3 processor. Now, personal opinion, you get the Pan Am processor, you might be better off getting something else that's my thought but anyway we'll have to wait and see what Microsoft has in store for us I'm looking forward to the announcement we'll certainly have videos coming out tomorrow there'll be some articles coming out tomorrow on, on a lot of the popular news site you might even see my name on a few let me know your thoughts on what's coming tomorrow. Would the Surface Pro 8 with Thunderbolt make a good work portable workstation-ish product for your workflow? How would Thunderbolt on the Surface Pro 8 change your workflow? Leave me a comment below. I'm very interested in what people think of this. I'm extremely interested. I think we've got something good here. I've been waiting for Microsoft to unveil Thunderbolt on their devices. We know they've said in the past there's some sort of security risk. That's debatable. It's kind of interesting that they're ready to introduce that now. Either way, water under the bridge. I'm ready to see it. Let me know your thoughts and we will be back tomorrow with more feedback from the event. Take care everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. Enjoy the event tomorrow. We will see you tomorrow. Take care, everybody. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.